Good morning, everybody. That's very good. Um, my name is Ellen Toscano. I'm the director of New York University Florence. I'm one of the conveners with NYU DC of today's conference. On November 4th, 1966, the Arno River in Florence overflowed its banks, flooding the city of Florence, taking the lives of people, and damaging countless pieces of art and rare books of immeasurable value, some irreparably. Thousands of young people, volunteers, the so-called Angeli del Fango, rushed to Florence to assist in efforts to rescue and stabilize more than a thousand books and almost a thousand, more than a million books, excuse me, and a thousand paintings, frescoes, and sculptures damaged by the mud and water. In 2006, on the 40th anniversary of the flood, NYU Florence with the Institute of Fine Arts and Friends of Florence organized a conference to study and record the conservation legacies of that flood. <laughs> Professional conservators from around the world lent their expertise to the efforts in Florence, and the tragedy of destroyed and damaged art and books led to an increased international awareness uh, of the need for conservation programs. The field of art conservation was transformed by the flood and its aftermath. With the development of new techniques and materials and lessons learned for future large-scale events. This history was discussed during the 40th year anniversary commemoration in Florence, which Sen Senator Ted Kenny Kennedy keynoted. Now on the occasion of the 50th anniversary, the same partners have come together with the mayor of Florence to organize two conferences, today in Washington and a week in Florence, to call attention to an equally devastating challenge to our cultural patrimony, patrimony, the intentional destruction of cultural property for intellectual reasons. Destruction of cultural property in war is by no means a uniquely contemporary phenomenon or one limited to extreme in, ex extremism. It is as ancient as the sites targeted. Whether the intentional target of destruction <laughs> or collateral damage in destructive and indiscriminate warfare, or the source of looting and trafficking to finance international criminal activities. Threats to cultural patrimony are ever more divisive, ever more diverse and destructive, and the need for organized response from the international community to remediate these crimes against culture is great. The international community is struggling to cope with the destruction which seems to be continuing unabated. As the director, of, uh, director General of UNESCO warned, nothing is safe from cultural cleansing underway. It targets human lives and minorities and is marked by the systematic destruction of humanity's ancient heritage. The Director General makes an important point to keep in mind. What we are talking about targeting cultural property is an aspect of a broader campaign of genocidal intentions. The effort to eradicate a people or an ideology and the targeted population's cultural identity. Raphael Lemkin, a Polish Jew who escaped the Nazis and went on to author the 1948 Genocide Convention, attempted to include in the definition of genocide both barbarity or tax on people and vandalism, which he described as the destruction of the cultural pattern of a group, such as language, traditions, monuments, archives, libraries, and churches. The convention ultimately adopted by the UN omitted on, on genocide, omitted cultural vandalism as an element of genocide. But the international community did include provisions to protect heritage in the event of armed conflict within the 1954 Hague Convention. The United Nations Security Council has called on the international community to take steps in cooperation with Interpol, UNESCO, and other international organizations to prevent the trafficking in items of cultural, scientific, and religious importance. And last month, for the first time in September, the International Criminal Court 
delivered its judgment in the case, uh, in, in the first time holding the intentional destruction of religious and historic buildings was a war crime. The meetings in Florence and Washington, D.C. will examine the cultural catastrophe that results when built heritage is targeted for destruction from a variety of perspectives and disciplines. Topics will include iconoclasm and the propagandic use of destruction, methods of documentation and preservation of endangered artifacts and at-risk sites of cultural heritage, the feasibility, desirability, and ethics of reconstructing destroyed cultural properties, national and international efforts to secure and protect cultural properties, strategies to control illicit trafficking of art, and protocols for the collection, maintenance, and repatriation of looted antiquities. Um, before I finish, I would like to extend my personal thank you to two partners, three partners. First, Michelle Marincola, who many of you know. As I mentioned, Michelle and I first worked together in the preparation of the conference about the flood 10 years ago. Michelle also guides the care of the collection of art at Villa La Pietra on NYU's beautiful campus in Florence with professional conservators on the faculty of the IFA as well as their students, some of whom are in the audience today. Michelle is a trusted colleague and a dear friend, and I thank her for her guidance and suggestion in the preparation of this conference. And the wonderful Tom McIntyre in the back of the room. Um, Tom is a rare and treasured colleague as well, understated in his public role, though we're trying to change that, <laughs> but invaluable in the conception and preparation of meetings of experts on a wide range of fields. I'm deeply indebted to him. And finally, I'd like to thank Friends of Florence founder Simonetta Brandolini Dada and her sister Renee Gardner. It has been a true delight to work with both of you on this conference and Simonetta with you over many years. Friends of Florence has made a true impact on the city of Florence, raising money for and guiding the restoration and conservation of hundreds of works of art. Friends of Florence follows the footsteps of the Angeli del Fango, many of whom were young Americans, who rushed to Florence to lend their efforts to the rescue efforts. Um, and I now turn the dais over to Simonetta. Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning. And a thank you to all of you present today and to our esteemed speakers uh, present a warm thank you also to Ellen Toscano. Thank you for your kind words. She is truly an energetic and inspiring director of the NYU Villa La Pietra campus. And my thank you also to His Excellency Italian Ambassador Armando Vericchio and to the Honorable Dario Navdella, Mayor of Florence, and to fo fellow founding Friends of Florence board member Renee Gardner and Thomas McIntyre, and also to uh, Professor Michelle Marincola for all of your help in organizing uh, today's conference. A few words about who Friends of Florence uh, is and what we do, really. Um, Friends of Florence is delighted to par partner with the New York University, the Italian Embassy, and with the City of Florence for this timely conference on protecting cultural heritage in an uncertain time in commemoration of the Alluvione of the flood that ravaged Florence on November 4th, 1966, thus marking the 50th year anniversary since the devastating waters that engulfed Florence in a treacherous grasp of destruction. High waters also hit Venice and other regions to the north of Italy on that same date. With the ongoing threats to and destruction of cultural property due to natural disasters and intentional ruin and collateral damage caused by war and terrorism, the subject is especially timely for all of us on a global level and really keeping human memory in its form of art and culture and history. Friends of Florence was founded in 1998 as a 501c3 US-based nonprofit foundation. And we now have supporters throughout the world who perceive Florence's art and cultural patrimony as their own, as it truly forms the basis of Western civilization. During the past 18 years, Friends of Florence has been able to restore numerous major sites and artworks in Florence and in Tuscany as well, including the Loggia dei Lanzi, 
the Tribune, the Niobe Room, and other major portions of the Uffizi, the Michelangelo statuary in the Academia, including the David and the Slaves, City Tabernacles has an example of public art, entire fresco cycles in San Marco, Santissima Annunziata, and other sites, paintings and artworks, in all, and many of the major churches in the city. We also assisted in completing the restoration of the Gates of Paradise for the Baptistry of Florence. Those sublime doors, I'm sure many of you know them, uh, by Ghiberti who, that were ravaged by the flood of 1966. This symposium today follows our successful restoration of the five Botticelli and Polaiola rooms in the Uffizi Gallery, unveiled just last week on October 17th, has our gift to the city of Florence in recognition of the flood of 1966. We also are presently inaugurating the completion of two joint projects, and this is a first um, initiative really for Friends of Florence, in partnership with Save Venice, that have been shared in both cities to commemorate this anniversary. In November, we shall also be giving our biannual restoration prize to a Florentine artwork that was damaged by natural disaster, by terrorism or war. That was the, uh, those were the terms of this competition. And this year's award will be going to an important project that was still in need of restoration after being ravaged by the waters in 1966. I can't tell you which it is because not even the winner of the prize knows that yet. Uh, so that's still secret until the 11th of November. Uh, five decades after the devastating flood, we and our colleagues continue to seek ways to protect and salvage extraordinary treasures using the latest technologies and strategies combined with the best conservation practices, all thanks to generous and enlightened donors in the United States and other countries. It is now my honor to introduce His Excellency Armando Vericchio, Ambassador of Italy to the United States. In his three decades of distinguished public service, he has held senior positions in both Italian and European institutions. He has been national security advisor to the Prime Minister of Italy and diplomatic advisor to the President of the European Commission. Prior to his present appointment, he also served as ambassador, ambassador to Serbia. Since his arrival, Ambassador Vericchio has dedicated the past months to timely and interesting conferences and presentations on protecting culture and historic monuments and in, in exploring important political and geographical topics. His Excellency Ambassador Vericchio. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, dear Simonetta, for your kind of words of introduction. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today to be part of this very interesting event that since the ver very title uh, is telling of the very reasons why we're here today. Um, I want to, 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 to have a few words of introduction and welcome to uh, the Mayor of Florence, the Honorable Dario Nardella, sending my appreciations to, to Ellen Toscano and uh, to Michelle Marincola. Uh, why we're here today and why we're here uh, at the university, because I think that uh, it is important that, that uh, our students and both of our scholars focus on what is at stake here. It's not just to, to remember a terrible event, a natural event, the flood that, that on terrible day of November, November 1966 changed the shape of Florence, but also to reflect on the importance of protecting cultural heritage. This is one of the major challenges of our times. Uh, I don't want to, to dispute the title that uh, reading that objective uncertain. I wonder whether we have uh, had a possibility to live in certain times. Uh, uncertainty is part, is part of our life, uh, both because of nature, as it happened uh, that day in Florence, and also because of man-made disasters. Uh, so I want to share with you uh, a few thoughts on, on this. Um, as Italy, uh, as ambassador of Italy, having the privilege of serving as ambassador of Italy, uh, I consider uh, particularly important to, to draw the attention and focus on the importance of preserving history and heritage. Um, this is one of the major challenges of our times, uh, to be able to ensure that the constant flow of history is not, is not abruptly interrupted. This is a, a, not just a reminder, but it's very important to better focus on today's events. 
Second heritage. Uh, Italy, uh, and this is the UNESCO who, who considered this, as the uh, incredible record of the largest portion of uh, heritage that uh, humankind has ever produced. Uh, this is a privilege, sometimes it can be a burden, because, because we have been entrusted with, a, with the incredible responsibility of preserving this heritage and passing over to our children and our uh, and the future generations. But when we, we preserve history and preserve heritage, we're not simply trying to, to, to ensure that uh, this remains as it is. We have to improve, we have to adapt, we have to cherish, we have to protect. And protection is a, protection is a very demanding responsibility. Uh, I was um, watching yesterday at the embassy an event that we hosted, uh, incredible and beautiful images and shooting of uh, uh, craftsmen, artisan, and restorer were trying to, 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 to keep and preserve. What, what really struck me was the fact that they were absolutely aware of the importance that uh, they wanted to bring life back to those monuments, to those artifacts. They don't want to, to have their own role there in a way being considered as something, as an external intervention. We have to uh, care and we have to respect. Uh, and this is particularly important today, uh, for both from a cultural point of view, but also from, from an historic point of view. The symposium is very, is very rich. I was going through the different panels which really look so interesting. They will able to cover the different aspects uh, I think that uh, NYU had uh, made a great, great uh, um, program. This symposium will be important, but again, not just to remember an event that occurred on a day of November of 15 years ago, 50 years ago, but simply to draw the attention and focus of the importance of cherishing, loving, and protecting heritage. Uh, and. Uh, since we are here at the university, I couldn't leave the podium without, uh, uh, in a way, sending a message to those who will be entrusted with the greatest responsibility of all, uh, our students, our future generations, because heritage is not just something that belongs to the past, but it is the best way to ensure your future. So you have a great responsibility, a great privilege. Thank you very much. Now I have the great pleasure of introducing the mayor, my mayor in Florence, uh, Dario Nardella. Mayor Nardella became mayor of Florence in May of 2014. He began his political career in 2004 when he was elected a councilman for the city of Florence from the Democratic Party, then served as deputy mayor and a member of the Chamber of Deputies for the Democratic Party as a close ally of the Prime Minister Matteo Renzi and a member of the Commission for Tourism, Industry and Trade. He is both a concert violinist, which I love, <laughs> with a degree from the Luigi Cherubini Conservatory in Florence and a lawyer with a degree in jurisprudence from the University of Florence. He's a lecturer, interestingly and pertinently, in cultural heritage law, also at the University of Florence. At NYU Florence, we are very privileged to work closely with him and his administration in organizing conferences, talks, meetings, and exhibitions. This close relationship with the city and its leadership has provided for our nearly 1,000 students a richer and more integrated relationship with the beautiful city in which we are hosted. We're grateful for the mayor's support and friendship and we're always delighted to work with him on initiatives such as that which we're presenting today. Mayor Nardella. Thank you, Aline, for this kind presentation and good morning to all of you. First of all, my heartfelt thank you to New York University, Aline Toscano, friends of Florence and Simonetta Brandolini Dadda, and the Ambassador Armando Varricchio and the Italian Embassy for making this event possible. This year, we are going to commemorate, as you know, the 50th anniversary of the flooding the, that devastated Florence on November 4th, 19, 
1966. Sorry. From that tragic event on, Florence has developed its resilience almost as a natural skill, a natural ability of its community that through the years thought turned more and more into structured actions and policies aimed to the preservation of the city's cultural heritage, both material and immaterial. A form of preservation that considers arts and culture and the policies related, a tool for social and economic growth, a mean for stability and therefore the ultimate strategy for peace in a time when, in addition to natural disasters, devastation is given by conflicts as we all are experiencing very sadly nowadays. Uncertainty today is given by so many factors from climate change and the natural disasters to man-made disasters, wars, and the terrorist threat. Florence, the city I have the honor and the wonderful responsibility to represent, has experienced in its recent history all of them. From the devastation of World War II to the 1966 flood, whose 50th anniversary we are commemorating this year, as you all know, to the cowardice of the terrorist attack perpetrated by the Mafia in 1993. Yet each time our city reacted standing up back again, thanks to the generosity of the many who in each occasion came from all over the world to help and also thanks to its own cultural background and innate ability to be resilient. But resilience cannot just be an innate quality or attitude of a community. It needs tools, methodology, and rules to be an efficient governance strategy. Florence today, as you can see, only in the UNESCO World Heritage Area is home of 35 monumental squares. 42 museums, 30 international schools and universities, as you very well know. Don't worry, NYU is the best of our American <laughs> universities, of course. And it welcomes more than 15 million tourists per year. Just to mention some of the figures. In order to preserve over time the integrity, the authenticity of the outstanding universally acknowledged value, which led to the recognition of a World Heritage Site, sustainable development, urban security, social integration policies centered on mutual respect and on intercultural dialogue, can provide the foundations to protect a livable and welcoming city. How does our city relate to these challenges? Resilience as a strategy is above all prevention and readiness. In relation to natural disasters, we developed an integrated system between the municipality and the civil defense forces that, according to the different alert levels, allows rapidity in action and communication to citizens. Also, thanks to the use of communication and information technologies, such as SMS and social media. As you can see, here's just a quick example of how we classified actions according to alert levels. And we have also a civil protection system, as you can see, with a low emergency regime and operations room, etc. Moreover, we approved a flood risk management plan for the river banks, coastal Tuscany and the northern Tuscany. The plan has uh, multiple goals, such as to mitigate the damage to the production system, infrastructures, and property, to reduce the risk for protected areas and mitigate the negative effects for the ecological condition of the water bodies to reduce the risk to life and to mitigate the damage to the related strategic system, 
hospitals, schools, and uh, health structures. To enhance everyone's awareness and the per perception in regards to possible effects of a catastrophic flood. To reduce the risk for the cultural heritage and mitigate possible damage to the landscape system. In addition to the risk management plan, together with the civil defense, the municipality of Florence has approved a protection plan for civic museums. Since protection of cultural assets during an emergency must be implemented according to the definition of a protection policies and actions to be performed in the case of calamities. Municipal employees and civic museums personnel are conditioned by civil defense forces according to the different levels of alert, a warning, alert, and the overcoming of the emergency. All employees of museum sites and volunteers go through that training so that in the case of emergency, they will be in a position to intervene uh, correctly. Together with personal training, numerous rules about artworks positioning in museums have been implemented. For instance, those determining positioning safety levels in case of a natural disasters. But Florence is not just prevention. The city's most ancient institution, and actually Italy's most ancient, for restoration, the Opificio delle Pietre Dure, has become, after the 1966 flood, a nationwide and internationally renowned excellence in restoration, led according to the most advanced technologies. And thanks to this amazing us in technologies and knowledge, we are working now at several projects to make the city of Florence home of an international hub for restoration and conservation, the Ospedale dei Beni Culturali, a cultural heritage hospital. But readiness today means, unfortunately, to prevent also from a different threat that seems to understand very well the importance of cultural heritage for our communities. The terrorist threat. When the mafia attacked to the heart of humanism and, the, our, and of our civilization by placing a car bomb behind the Uffizi in 1993, as I, I told you, destroying five lives and the heart of our city, we learned that hard way, how deeply a way of the symbolic and material importance of a cultural heritage terrorist strategy is. Today in Florence, people, museums, squares, and monuments are protected by anti-terrorist units that see army carabinieri with a special, a special section, the nucleo for uh, protection of cultural heritage, and state police for over 30, uh, 300 units deployed all around sensitive targets. This is what Florence resilience consisted of. This is what the city has been able to deliver out of the scars of war, nature, and the terrorist attacks, capitalizing its weakness into knowledge and action. But there is another level which goes beyond armed forces and technology, and that actually comes before any other tool or strategy we can ever implement, and it's the cultural and political background that community develops. This is the grounds of our decision making. Today, more than ever, we face new threats, and it would be a narrow-minded, short, segmented vision not to take into consideration that it's the, a cultural battle, battle, the one we are facing. Don't mis misunderstand, misunderstand me. It's not a war between the West and the East, not between Islamic culture and the Christian one, no. The war is between obscurantism and democracy, between human rights and atrocity, and this goes across every culture, every religion, every background. For these reasons, cultural heritage has to be considered and protected in both its aspects, material 
and immaterial. Because as we all very well know, it is through the destruction of symbols that our enemies aim to destroy our identity, our human values of solidarity, civil liberties and rights, not to mention our economy and assets. A clear example is what happened in Tunisia. You remember the attack to the Bardo Museum, one of the symbols of uh, unity between uh, uh, Europe and Asia and Africa. Terrorist strategy aims to put us against each other by creating suspect and fear amongst our own communities, isolation and uncertainty. Under my point of view, under the point of view of responsibility, I am called to serve as a mayor. The first and the most important strategy has to be political and cultural, because culture is commitment, and so is politics. Since in 1955, when Europe was still very poor and divided, Mayor Giorgio Lapira opened our city to the Mediterranean dialogues, making Florence the city of an intercultural dialogue, the city where bridges are built, not walls. It is from this consideration that we felt the urgency to contextualize the values of his political heritage to the contemporary challenges of modern societies. I do firmly believe in the diplomacy of cities, and I do because cities and mayors are the first to deal with the impact of a crisis on their communities. They have to find solutions, so on the other hand, this skill makes dialogue between cities way more efficient and immediate, while dialogue and decision making at natural levels is necessarily more complex. On those bases, we launched last year the World Mayor Summit Unity in Diversity. 60 cities from all over the world committed to build a network that will support and implement specific projects in particular those focused to rescue cultural heritage in different areas affected by crisis. And I remember the collaboration with Ellen and the U New York University in Florence, with many students coming from the university to participate to this important meeting. Cultural heritage and related governance policies are the prerequisite for healthy societies and represent a real resource and a real investment for the economy of many cities. Moreover, they represent an healthy wealth since they are strictly connected to the social growth of communities. It is therefore a fact that cultural heritage, together with arts and education, plays a fundamental role in mediating and preventing social or war conflict by re-establishing the connection between culture, social, and economic growth, stability, and uh, ultimately, peace. The Charter of Florence that you see here is the platform all 60 delegations signed. Between the many actions, including supporting campaigns such as uh, Unite for Heritage from UNESCO. The Charter more specifically, specifically commits mayors to make available to UNESCO its national commissions, governments, and city administrations, a local network of specialists, particularly in the field of conservation and heritage management, so to activate a protection platform for material and immaterial cultural heritage in danger because of wars and in natural disasters make a plea to UNESCO for the establishment of a permanent committee for the cons cons consult uh, consultation of mayors, which promotes a new role of cities in the protection and enhancement of natural and cultural heritage, of diversity in cultural and the linguistic expressions, and in promoting peace-building strategies. As the leading city of this proposal, 
We were particularly pleased when in January, Director, Director General Irina Bokova supported the initiatives as be the letter of the Assistant Director General Banderin. For this reason, unity in diversity has be become the main platform also for the International Cooperation Annual Plan of the City of Florence and the two pilot projects approved during the summit by all the mayors have been launched. A cooperation agreement with Tunis and its cultural institutions, and the, the reconstruction of a community center in Kobane, where educational activities in restoration and innovative technologies will be held. Note that Kobane is one of the city very hard attacked by ISIS, and 150,000 people escaped from this city. Goals in both cases are cultural heritage preservation and management actions, material and immaterial heritage promotion, exchange of know-how with local partners through advanced technologies and innovation, development of soft power policies within communities. In conclusion, dear friends, readiness, technology are necessary, but the most important strategy is to prioritize cultural heritage as the main subject of a dialogue between people. As the preamble of the 1972 conventions quotes, we are living a historical period in which heritage is increasingly threatened with the destruction not only by the traditional causes of decay, but also by changing social and economic conditions, or even intentional attacks. Therefore, it is the duty of the world humanity to strengthen the spirit of cooperation among countries in order to respond to the challenges related to the protection of world heritage properties. I would like to leave the floor with this message and inviting you all to follow our works on November the 2nd for the second edition of Unity in Diversity. Thank you to all of you. Thank you.